If you've ever been caught in the midst of a natural disaster, you know how terrifying and destructive they can truly be. Starting off this countdown at number 10, the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. This was a catastrophic magnitude 9.1 earthquake that struck undersea off the west coast of Indonesia on December 26, 2004. The quake created a massive tsunami that took the lives of approximately 230,000 people and displaced nearly 2 million people in 14 South Asian and East African countries. Traveling as fast as 500 miles per hour, the tsunami Tsunami reached land in as little as 15 to 20 minutes after the quake hit, giving residents as little time to flee to higher ground. In some places, especially hardest hit Indonesia, the tsunami wave reached over 100 feet high. Damages from the earthquake and tsunami were estimated at $10 billion. This event is considered the third largest earthquake in the world ever since 1990, and its tsunami has taken the lives of more people than any other tsunami in recorded history. Number 9, 1839 Coringa Cyclone. On November 25th, 1839, a massive cyclone struck Coringa, India, producing a 40-foot high storm surge that devastated the city. In its wake, the storm left 300,000 people deceased and destroyed over 25,000 ships, making it one of the deadliest storms in human history. Although little is known about the storm due to lack of sufficient records, scholars believe that the city's inhabitants were taken completely by surprise once the cyclone made landfall. This is due in part because of the fact that the storm occurred late in the Bay of Bengal cyclone season. Following the storm surge, a very few survived to tell about the disaster. Wreckage from the city's vast number of ships was found miles inland, while Karinga itself was literally wiped off the map. It never recovered from the cyclone as the city's survivors made no attempt to rebuild in the years and decades that followed. To this day, Karinga remains a small village area, a mere shadow of its former glory. Number 8, the 1976 Tangshan earthquake. At 3.42 a.m. on July 28, 1976, the Chinese city of Tangshan was razed to the ground by a magnitude 7.8 earthquake, according to a report by the U.S. Geological Survey. Tangshan, an industrial city with a population of about 1 million at the time of the disaster, suffered staggering casualties of over 240,000. While this was the official toll, some experts suggest this number is grossly underestimated and that the loss of life was likely closer to 700,000. Reportedly, 85% of Tangshan's buildings collapsed and trembles were felt in Beijing, China, more than 100 miles away and it took several years before the city of Tangshan was rebuilt. Built. Number 7, Hurricane Katrina. Early in the morning on August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast of the United States. When the storm made landfall, it had a Category 3 rating on the Safar Simpson hurricane scale. It brought sustained winds of 100 to 140 miles per hour and stretched 400 miles across. While the storm itself did a great deal of damage, its aftermath was catastrophic. Levy branches led to massive flooding, and hundreds of thousands of people in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama were displaced from their homes and experts estimate that Katrina caused more than $100 billion in damages. Number 6, the 2010 Haiti earthquake. The catastrophic magnitude 7.0 earthquake that struck Haiti just northwest of Port-au-Prince on January 12, 2010 ranks as one of the three deadliest quakes of all time. Haiti standing as one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere and its limited history of large earthquakes left it extremely vulnerable to damages and loss of life. As many as 3 million people were affected by the quake. The toll estimates of people that passed passed away were all over the place. Initially, the government of Haiti estimated fatalities stood at about 230,000 people, but in January 2011, officials revised that figure to 316,000. Halfway at number 5, the 1920 Haiwan earthquake. On December 16, 1920, a catastrophic 7.8 magnitude earthquake occurred in Haiwan country, Republic of China, taking the lives of estimated 273,000 people. The quake resulted in a large number of aftershocks and landslides that contributed significantly to the overall damage. Moreover, numerous rivers were damaged from the sudden jarring motion of the quake, resulting in extreme flooding as the course of some rivers were completely diverted. In total, 20,000 square kilometers were directly affected by the earthquake. Despite the tremendous deceased toll, many researchers believe that the event could have been far worse if not for the fact that the quake occurred away from many of China's major cities. Although the earthquake is considered one of the worst natural disasters in human history, it is also one of the most ignored tragedies of the 20th century due to the political and social issues occurring in China during this time period. Number 4, 526 Antosh Earthquake. In May of 526 AD, a massive earthquake hit Syria during the mid-morning hours, claiming at least 250,000 lives. Scientists believe that the earthquake was likely a 7.0 magnitude quake. As its name implies, the disaster took place primarily around the Asian city of Antosh, the quake's epicenter, causing severe damage to the city's buildings and infrastructure, including Constantine's Domas Ora Church. The most devastating aspect of the quake, however, lies with the large 
large-scale fire that erupted during its aftermath. Lasting nearly a week, the fire destroyed nearly all of Antosh's buildings and claimed numerous lives. The number of people that passed away varies significantly due to the lack of documentation available from this time period. Scholars believe, however, that between 250,000 and 300,000 individuals lost their lives. Number 3. 1887 Yellow River Flood in September of 1887, torrential rains resulted in one of the worst natural disasters in recorded history. As China's Yellow River escaped its banks and flooded an estimated 50,000 square miles of northern China, with centuries of silt depositing itself along the bottom of the river due to its inability to flood outward. Water levels naturally rose as a result, swelling the Yellow River to unprecedented heights in the years that followed. As heavy rain set in for several days in September of 1887, flood banks near the city of Zhangzhou could no longer hold the water at bay, allowing the river to flow uncontrollably throughout the low-lying plains that surrounded it. As additional flood banks broke, entire regions were engulfed with flood water within moments. As the water finally receded weeks later, nearly 2 million Chinese were left homeless, while approximately 900,000 people passed away by the devastating flood. Lack of preparation combined with poor government response only exacerbated the volatile situation on the ground, as basic necessities such as food and water remained low for weeks. Number 2. 1970 Bola Cyclone On November 12, 1970, a powerful cyclone made landfall along the coast of East Pakistan, now Bangladesh inflicting massive damage on the poorly prepared region, reaching sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. The storm delivered a 33-foot-high storm surge that devastated local communities. Approximately 3.6 million people were directly impacted by the storm, with nearly 85% of all homes and buildings destroyed or severely damaged along the coast. The powerful cyclone is believed to have taken the lives of nearly 500,000 people, including 46,000 fishermen, which crippled the area's fishing capabilities for several years, as 9,000 boats were also destroyed. Landslides, flooding, and rain also destroyed countless crops and livestock in both India and Pakistan during the weeks that followed. The Pakistan government was slow to respond to the crisis, making conditions on the ground very difficult for the region's survivors in the days and weeks that followed. Rather than opening its borders to foreign relief efforts, the Pakistani government purposely delayed numerous supply drops and convoys loaded with medical supplies, food, and water due to political indifference to the crisis. To this day, the 1970 Bola cyclone is considered the deadliest tropical cyclone on record, costing an estimated $86.4 million in damages. Coming in at number one, Central China Flood of 1931. In 1931, China experienced the worst natural disaster in human history, as floods from the Yellow, Yangtze, Pearl, and Hayu rivers invaded much of central China. The disaster was a result of numerous factors, occurring over a period of several months. Melting ice and snow from China's mountains, combined with heavy rains throughout the spring, summer, and autumn, forced each of China's major rivers outside of their banks, resulting in a flood zone that covered an area of approximately 100 80,000 square kilometers, which is equivalent to the size of England and half of Scotland combined. At its peak, scholars estimate that as many as 53 million people were directly affected by the flooding, with the number of the deceased reaching an estimated 3.7 million people. Apart from the tremendous human toll, the Great Flood was also responsible for destroying huge areas of farmland and housing, resulting in a famine the following year. Diseases such as measles, cholera, malaria, and so many more also spread rapidly due to the intense flooding as sanitization began to systematically break down across the region due to overcrowding and the displacement of millions. Starting our list right, we have a time vortex. In 1970, Floridan pilot Bruce Jernon Jr., his father and friend were flying towards Bohemi Island in the Bahamas. They noticed a rather unusual crowd, to which he referred to as an electronic fog. This is where it gets weirder. When they entered the fog, it became dark very quickly, resulting in little visibility. They would notice these bright white flashes getting progressively worse as they went further in the tunnel of smoke. Navigational tools such as their compasses would begin to malfunction by spinning around rapidly, similar to that of Christopher Columbus when he was around the same area. They would come to the quick conclusion that they needed to escape this fog, but once they did, air traffic control towers detected them over the Miami beach, which would be physically impossible as his last possible known location was in the Gulf Stream, which is over 100 miles away, which would mean he would have had to travel at nearly 2,000 miles per hour, which is not possible. In our number nine spot, we have the Ellen Austin. The Ellen Austin was a 210 foot American multi-masted ship. In 1880, this ship was set for New York. However, weeks into its travel, it came across an unidentified ship drifting just north of the Bermuda Triangle. Since the unknown ship wasn't sailing, the captain of the ship ordered a crew to check out the mysterious vessel. When they had boarded, no one was to be found. 
no signs of violence, nor any signs of the ship's logs. They would attempt to bring the unknown ship back to New York, but would be interrupted by a fierce storm which separated the two ships. After a few days, the captain of the Ellen Austin would spot the ship drifting aimlessly again. They sailed towards the ship once again to find out the ship was empty with no sign of the crew he had sent. No sign of struggle or distress. This ship was then marked as cursed to the crewmates, but the captain, being oblivious, would still want to seize the opportunity and order another group to sail it. As they set sail with both ships once again, the weather turned poor and separated the ships again, with the ghostly ship disappearing for good. Imagine sending out another group of men to sail this boat after the first group of men perished out of existence. Taking our number 8 spot, we have the Flight 19 mystery. In 1945, the United States sent a group of 5 torpedo bombers known as Flight 19 over the Bermuda Triangle for navigation training. As the bombers flew out over water, all five bomber planes would disappear, along with all 14 airmen. In one of the last radio messages received, Lieutenant Charles Taylor, the flight commander, reported, We are entering white water. Nothing seems right. We don't know where we are. The water is green. No, white. Some have speculated that aliens use the Bermuda Triangle as a portal to our planet, where they would capture humans along with our technology to conduct further research on our species. This could be one of the reasons for the disappearance of Flight 19, but we will never know if there is an interdimensional portal without going in it first. At number 7, we have the USS Cyclops ghost ship. The disappearance of the USS Cyclops, one of the Navy's biggest fuel ships, marks the largest loss of life in the history of the US Navy in a single incident. In March 1918, this massive ship set out to sail from Brazil to Baltimore through the Bermuda Triangle with about 309 crew members on board. Once they set off, no signs of issues were reported by the ship. However, the ship was never heard from again. An entire search of the area was put into action, but nothing was ever found. What was odd was that the captain of the USS Cyclops never sent out a distress signal. Ships and planes that traveled through the Bermuda Triangle have said they have spotted this large naval ship still sailing within. But every time they attempt to get closer or contact the ship, it would begin to vanish out of thin air. The USS Cyclops was a rather large ship, which makes this ghostly sighting eerie. At number 6, we have a government testing ground. It is believed by a few that the Bermuda Triangle is actually a testing ground for some governments that border the Atlantic Ocean. It's set to test their advanced technology ranging from underground nuclear bombs to specialized vehicle and weapons. It is said that the governments attempt to add this negative stigma towards the Bermuda Triangle for the sole purpose of keeping people away from their testing grounds. Secret government involvement could explain the disappearance and fairly odd phenomena that occur within the triangle. Right in the hump of our list, we have sea monsters. Could something be lurking in the depths of the triangle that could explain the disappearances? Well, there is a massive sea serpent said to roam in the Bermuda Triangle called the Bermuda Beast. The Bermuda Beast is described as a massive sea creature that is four times larger than the Eiffel Tower, making this the largest creature to ever exist if it was truly found. The Bermuda Beast could be the explanation for the missing ships and planes, since it is said to leap out of the water and snatch ship and planes. If that doesn't sound convincing, remember that only 5% of the oceans are discovered, which makes the ocean just as mysterious as the Bermuda Triangle triangle. Who really knows what lies under? Enchanting our number 4 spot, we have the witchcraft. No, there are no witches on their little witch boats in the Bermuda Triangle. However, this story is just as odd. On December 22, 1967, a 23 foot luxury yacht named the Witchcraft left Miami with her captain Dan Burrock and his friend Father Patrick Horgan. The plan was to view the Christmas lights from the water, but after reaching a distance of only one mile off the coast, the coast guards would be notified that the ship had hit something. After reaching the yacht's last known location, it was nowhere to be found. The weird part was, was that the ship was theoretically unsinkable with an arsenal of life-saving devices ranging from lifeboats to flares. As well, Captain Dan Burrup was a cautious yachtsman, making the disappearance surprising to those who knew him. The yacht is reported by some ships to be drifting through the Devil's Triangle, but no one has wanted to sail close enough to figure out the true mystery of the witchcraft. At number 3 of our list, we have Mary Celeste. On the fateful day of December 5, 1872, Mary Celeste set sail from New York Harbor to carry cargo to Italy, but unfortunately, the ship never made it to the destination. After several search and rescue efforts, the ship was found a 
drift in Bermuda Triangle, but none of its crew of 11 people were found. Personal belongings, food containers, precious cargo, and lifeboats were still on the ship. As well, rotten food was found on board and foul play was not detected throughout the whole ship. The boat was basically still seaworthy for it had seemed that everyone just disappeared without a single piece of evidence. Almost as if they all jumped off on the ship and just abandoned it. Since it had ended up in the Bermuda Triangle, it can be said that it has become a product of its curse. The famous Atlantis takes our number two spot. The infamous sunken city is believed to be situated within the Bermuda Triangle. Atlantis was said to be surrounded by hundreds of thousands of crystals that radiated large amounts of energy. Their energy radiating from the crystals could explain the area's tendencies to disrupt communication systems, compasses, and even completely immobilize ships and planes. Then in 1968, scuba diver J. Manson Valentine discovered a series of laid stones at the bottom of the ocean that appeared as though they formed a road, also known as Bimimi Road. Doing further investigation, sci-fi show Quest for Atlantis discovered a second layer beneath that road, which could be more promising evidence of a sunken city. Coming in at our number one spot, and don't be disappointed, but it all may just be in our head with no mystery at all. The theory of the Bermuda Triangle having no mystery is definitely something more believable. Scientist Carl Cruzel Nicky said that everything could be explained by human error, bad weather, and heavy air and sea traffic. As well, the Bermuda Triangle is known as a high traffic area. Ships and planes go through this body of water every day at all times, and where there are people, there will be incidents. The area is known to be an active hurricane zone with a Gulf Stream running directly through it, making it a place of unpredictable weather. Or better yet, what if the cause for the disappearances was related to the negative stigma attached to the triangle? Basically, what if people went into the area with the preconceived thought that it was dangerous, which would then psych themselves out, causing them to do human error? Now starting off with number 10, we have the USS Cyclops. The USS Cyclops was one of the biggest Navy fuel ships in March 1918 set sail from Brazil to Baltimore through the Bermuda area with around 309 crew aboard. The ship had sent their first and only message ever with no distress of any kind. All of a sudden the ship was gone, never to be heard or seen from again. They searched everywhere and found absolutely nothing. The captain of the ship never sent out any help signal and no one aboard ever responded to any radio calls sent out by nearby boats. You'd think that with a ship that big and that many people aboard, that they would at least find something, but they found absolutely nothing. At number nine, we have Great Isaac K. Lighthouse. This is actually said to be the only Bermuda Triangle incident to have happened on land. Great Isaac K. is a small island in the Bahamas and is only accessible by boat. Despite it being 151 feet tall, it's so tiny you can't even see it on Google Earth. The main attraction of the island is the lighthouse, right in the middle of it, which was built in 1859. On August 4th, 1969, the lighthouse was found to be abandoned by its two keepers who were never located. There was Hurricane Anna that passed by Great Isaac Island on August 1st and 2nd, but by August 4th, it was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So who really knows what happened to the lighthouse keepers? but some do say that they disappeared due to the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. Here at number eight, we have Piper PA-46-310P Malibu. The pilot of Piper PA-46 Malibu had a flight plan from the US to the Bahamas on April 10, 2007. And it was said that the thunderstorms had severe turbulence was forecasted that day. However, the pilot did not request any weather briefing. A weather briefing is what most pilots ask for when they are about to fly. It basically just shows them what the weather is supposed to be like in that area. There was no request from the pilot to air traffic control for alternate routes to avoid the weather. After many lightning strikes in that area, the plane began a very steep descent. It was very clear that they were flying into a level 6 thunderstorm. Communications were lost and they found no wreckage or people from the plane. Now at number 7, we have a Douglas C-54 Skymaster. On January 26, 1950, the Douglas C-54 Skymaster vanished during their flight from Alaska to Montana. The aircraft had eight crew and 36, passion and 36 passengers aboard. The plane made their first contact two hours into their eight-hour flight 
with the pilot saying that the flight was going well and they had just passed over Yukon. After that, there was no further contact. An hour after the plane didn't arrive in Montana, after its scheduled time, they sent out a search with 85 planes and 7,000 people searching 350,000 square miles. Many attempts were made to find C-54. However, after sending out three planes and all of them reporting mixed radio signals, sighting of survivors, but when looking closer there was nothing, and all of them had either crashed or had something gone wrong and the crew got injured. They eventually stopped the search. Here at number six is Ellen Austin. In 1881, the Ellen Austin set sail from Liverpool, headed to New York. The ship was transporting people that were immigrating to the US. The ship was at sea for several weeks before the captain decided they were going to take an unplanned detour through the Saragasso Sea, which is very well known for having incredibly crazy weather conditions, causing the ship to go into the Bermuda Triangle. The captain had then spotted another ship inside the Bermuda Triangle, but it was sailing very strangely. The ship seemed abandoned due to its erratic sailing patterns. He'd sent some of his crew members to investigate, and they found no one on board and with no sign of struggle or violence. So he said they should sail back together. A storm came along later and separated the ships. When the storm passed, the same thing happened. A mysterious ship appeared again, abandoned, with no sign of damage. At number five, we have the SS Vitarna. On November 8, 1888, the SS Vitarna vanished somewhere off the coast of Swarovstra with around 740 aboard the ship. The ship was traveling from Mandi to Bombay. When the incident happened, no one really knows much because the ship disappeared without a trace. No wreckage or bodies were recovered. Here at number four, we have the USS Porpoise. The USS Porpoise was actually the second ship with this name. The ship spent a long time hunting down slave trading vessels in the 1850s, but was then given to the North Pacific Exploring Expedition. The ship set sail to explore the island of Ladronas, Marina, and Bonin. After setting sail, that would be the last time anyone ever saw the ship and the 69 crew that were aboard. No sign of debris or any kind of indication that the ship ever even existed at all. Most people usually go with the story of a typhoon. I think we all know what really happened. Coming in at number three, Flight 19. Flight 19 was a group of five Avenger torpedo bombers that took off from Fort Lauderdale on December 5th, 1945. They had done lots of bombing journeys and expected this one to go as boring as the rest of them have. But to their surprise, it did not. Pilot Charles C. Taylor thought that his compass wasn't working properly and thought that the plane was flying in the complete wrong direction. Some of his crew fought this decision because they didn't think that it was very smart. Taylor then agreed with them and turned the plane back around. However, for reasons unknown, Taylor turned the plane back the other way again. Their transmissions started to become faint and they were going to run out of fuel before they found their way back. Taylor sent out a final message saying that when the plane dropped below 10 liters of fuel, that they were going to jump off for a greater chance of survival. Then, transmission ended. The Navy assumed the plane had dropped into the ocean, so they prepared a search and rescue. Two boats went out to look for them, and after 20 minutes of searching, one of those boats dropped off the radar. Out of all 13 crew, five pilots, and the plane itself, nothing was ever found. Here at number two is the disappearance of Caribbean Flight 912. On November 3rd, 1978, experienced pilot Ivory Rivers was making a solo flight in order to position the plane in St. Thomas to pick up passengers. Not a cloud in the sky and it was nice and warm out. The control tower radioed to the pilot a flight suggestion in order to avoid a small patch of rain. Rivers thought it was a good idea so he made the change. He approached the airport in St. Thomas and the plane was cleared for landing. At the same time, another plane was leaving the airport and when the control tower looked back, he could no longer see the plane's lights and it was gone from the radar. They executed a search party, but despite their efforts, nothing was found with the plane being only one mile away from land. Now at number one, we have Mitsubishi Mu-2B40. This one is a little more recent than the rest, which is why I personally think it's the scariest. Flight MU-2B40 disappeared on May 15th, 2017. Jennifer Bullman, a CEO of the management company Skylight. She owned a small private plane and wanted to take it from Puerto Rico to South Florida with her two sons with her boyfriend piloting the plane. 
as he was an experienced pilot. At 2.10 p.m. that day, the plane was only 37 miles east of the Bahamas. The Miami Air Traffic Control could no longer get in touch with the plane and couldn't track it on the radar. It's as if the plane just vanished into thin air. It was reported that there were absolutely no weather issues at all. Some would even say a perfect day. The next day, they began a search for the aircraft. After 30 long hours of searching, the US Coast Guard, who was flying the helicopter, located floating debris in the Atlantic Ocean. They found things like seats from the plane. However, in terms of finding anyone or any human remains, they found nothing. Starting our lesson right at number 10, we have Gordon Cooper and the Green Orb. Gordon Cooper was an American aerospace engineer, US Air Force pilot, and the youngest on Project Mercury, which was the first human space program of the United States. During Gordon Cooper's 22nd solo journey around the Earth, he may have encountered more than just some space junk. Nearing his end of the trip around the planet, he suddenly noticed a green glowing object approaching the Mercury capsule he was flying in. He wasn't the only one to have noticed the object, as a tracking station in Australia even detected that an unidentified object was in fact moving towards a ship. When asked about the occasion, Gordon said, quote, I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting our planet from other planets. Coming at number 9, we have Yang Liwei and the Mysterious Knock. Imagine you're all alone in a tiny spacecraft. It's your first time up there, all alone in endless space, then suddenly you hear a knock as if you're back home. Well, this really happened back in 2003. Yang Liwei became the first astronaut sent into space by the Chinese space program. He described it as someone knocking the body of the spaceship, just as knocking an iron bucket with a wooden hammer. Sound waves cannot travel through space, which makes it very quiet for us. So this is just more reason to question what that sound was. There are other Chinese astronauts between 2005 and 2008 who reported hearing similar sounds and it's not like you can just open the door to check. Maybe the Chinese space program has features that NASA doesn't. Or maybe there is something out there in space trying to get into the spacecraft. We'll never know. At a number 8 spot we have Neil Armstrong may have seen a UFO parking lot. Neil Armstrong is possibly the most famous astronaut of all time. I mean, he was the first to step on the moon and say the famous quote, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He has had worldwide media coverage regarding his moon expedition, but he notes that there was something else he witnessed there that was way more spectacular. I know this one is far-fetched, but according to book Aliens and Man, a synopsis of facts and belief, it's rumored that Armstrong sent a secret message to NASA during the Apollo 11 mission, saying, quote, These babies were huge, sir. Enormous. Oh God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there. They're on the moon watching us. He has never spoken about this occasion, maybe because he was bribed to not talk or he was just completely silenced. At a number 7 spot, we have Story Mosgrove saw a space eel. Story Mosgrove is one of the most experienced astronauts in history. He is one of the only ones who have flown in 6 different space flights. So when he's in space and he says something looks off, you best believe it looks off. Musgrave described what he saw as an eel-like creature that was just swimming in space. He said that it was eel-like because of its long whitish figure which closely resembles the eels back on Earth. Also noted that the creature had a unique way of propelling itself throughout space. And the odd thing is, he didn't just see this creature once, but multiple times. So it couldn't have been a hallucination, right? In an interview on sightings in 1995, Musgrave said, quote, the more you fly in space, the more you see an incredible amount of things that just sort of brings to you really a certainty that other living creatures are out there. At a number 6 spot, something James McDivitt can't describe. James McDivitt is an American former test pilot, United States Air Force pilot, aeronautical engineer, and a NASA astronaut who flew in the Gemini and Apollo programs. In one of his expeditions to space, he reported something flying around. The only way he could describe the figure is by calling it a geometrical shape similar to that of a beer can or pop with a something looking like a finger or pencil sticking out of it. He quickly took footage of it, but it did not look like your typical circular UFO. It was moving around as if it was a spacecraft. Right in the Humphrey list, we have a UFO exploding. On May 5th, 1981, retired Russian cosmonaut Vladimir K saw something remarkable from the porthole of Salyut 6. According to Vladimir, at around 6 p.m., when the spacecraft was flying over South Africa, moving towards the Indian Ocean, he saw an elliptical shaped object that was flying along with the spacecraft. From the frontal view, it looked like it would rotate in flight direction. Vladimir said, quote, the object resembles a barbell. I saw it becoming transparent like there was a body inside. 
At the other end, I saw something like gas discharging, like a reactive object. This is how we drew the sketch of the supposed UFO. Then all of a sudden, two explosions happened on the UFO in which he reported seeing it go down with clouds of smoke behind it. At a number four spot, we have Apollo 10 weird music. This was the mission just before Apollo 11 and paved its way. American astronauts Tom Strafford, Gene Cernan, and John Young were sent to the space to orbit and examine the far side of the moon. Only four days in their expedition, the, the three began to hear otherworldly organized sound coming from their headsets. They all reported hearing it for a total of one hour. They said, quote, boy, that sure is weird music. They heard this audio only when they're on the far side of the moon, which is out of contact with mission control and the farthest that any human has ever been from Earth. They ended the transcript saying, quote, you know, that was funny. That's just something from outer space, really. Who's going to believe it? All the way at number three spot, we have strange lights. American astronaut Lee Roy Chow was the commander of the International Space Station in 2005. During his exploration, Chow along with his crew claimed to observe a strange set of lights in space, specifically five bright lights. According to Chow, the formation resembled an upside down question mark. He believes to this day he was visited by aliens and even went out saying, quote, I'm skeptical of the claims that we've been visited by aliens from another planet or other dimension, but I don't rule it out 100%. I have an open mind and I do believe there are other life in this universe. Sadly, at our number two spot, we have corpses in space. Before they started manned missions to space, countries including the USSR and the USA first sent a variety of animals to space as test subjects. I know, it's kind of cruel. Examples are Laika the dog, Miss Baker the squirrel monkey, and Ham the chimp, just to name a few. Some of them made it back safely to Earth, while for others, a slight error in calculations meant space became their pet cemetery. Fast forward a few years, and we started flying into space. Astronauts who would go on the suborbital trips can sometimes observe the corpses of these martyrs of human advancement. And while this is sad, coming across the floating corpses of these innocent animals can be a freakishly haunting experience for these astronauts. Finally, at our number one spot, we have a DNA difference. Scott Kelly is an engineer, a naval aviator, and is a former NASA astronaut. And when he was in space, his DNA was literally changing. No, he didn't turn into the Hulk or anything. This is what really happened to him. Scott then took part on a year-long mission aboard the International Space Station. Once Scott returned from his mission, he and his brother Mark were both subjected to a two-year-long study because they were twins and they just wanted to find out the differences they could find from one person being in space and one person being on Earth. After the study concluded, NASA confirmed that 7% of Scott's genes were in fact different. So basically, it was discovered that space changes your DNA. They stated that the changing genes were due to the different demands on the body when he was in space. Well, there we have it, our top 10 scary astronaut encounters. What'd you guys think about this list? Personally, I like the Gordon Cooper with the green orb because this is the one that has always popped up to me when I search about scariest things in space. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Starting our list right at number 10, we have the fall of the European Union. Amid the invasion of Ukraine, tensions in Europe are rising and most the peace is in shambles. It seems that every war starts in Europe, so a collapse of the entire European Union is very possible based on the current events. In one of his quatrains, he says, quote, sacred temples of the Roman time will reject the foundations of their own foundation. Many believe he is referencing the Treaty of Rome, which essentially founded the Union in the first place. The Union is meant to promote peace, values, and the well-being of its citizens. Without this, Europe is just a bunch of countries that hate each other. That happened in the past and look how that turned out. Boom, World War I, World War II, the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, wars for Italian unification, the list just goes on and on. At our number nine spot, we have the invasion of France. Est-ce que je peux aller à toilette? That's pretty much all I know from France. But Nostradamus knew way more about what would happen to Paris in 2022. In his 1555 book, Le Prophetise, he predicted, quote, blue head shall white head harm in such degree, as France good to both shallower amount. He also claimed in this that the enemy would be coming from the east. The Ukraine-Russian war is still ongoing as far as I know, and Russia is technically to the east side. So it could be a foreshadow of yet another invasion, or could it be another setting for the next world war? Stealing our number eight spot, we have a solar storm. If you know nothing of space and its horrors, let me introduce you to a solar storm. There are literal changes in the sun's atmosphere. These changes cause huge bursts of energy, like solar flares, which could send streams of electrical charges and magnetic fields towards Earth at a speed of three million miles per hour. Well, Nostradamus said that these would affect us in 2022. 
He said, quote, like the sun, the head will seal the shining sea. The live fish of the Black Sea will almost boil. Nostradamus predicted a solar storm of unprecedented proportions, the liquefying of the poles, and a rising sea level. This sounds pretty terrible, especially since we had a huge solar storm in 1859 known as the Carrington event. It's just lucky that we were not a technically advanced civilization, so we didn't have to rely on that but this solar storm still sent electrified gas and subatomic particles towards Earth, which disrupted telegraph networks and even caused the northern lights to light up the whole world. Let's hope this one doesn't come true. At our number seven spot, we have asteroids. Nostradamus and every other prophets have made countless predictions regarding asteroids every single year, so you know that one year, they may actually have it right. But let's just hope not. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of asteroids flying towards us, so not to scare anyone, but eventually we will be hit by one. In one of his predictions, predictions, Nostradamus said, quote, fire do I see from the sky shall fall. And he continued this by saying, the cause will appear both stupefying and marvelous. Shortly afterward, there will be an earthquake. There is no doubt he's talking about an asteroid coming down on Earth, but we still don't know if that will mean if it will be an extinction level asteroid or just a small meteor shower. But what I do know is that this prediction is not anything good. And to our surprise, there's a potentially hazardous asteroid named 1989 JA that is supposedly around one mile long and is estimated to come close to Earth. But who knows, it could change its direction and come straight towards us. Sadly, at our number six spot, we have a nuclear warfare. Nostradamus said the world will go boom. Jokes aside, because this is one that's definitely more serious than that. The prediction of nuclear warfare happens every single year, but for good reason. We have so many nukes with so much tension between each country. I could just picture every single government hovering over their hand above the nuclear button. You would think after the World War II bombings of Japan that humanity will find more peaceful means of warfare, but I guess not. Nostradamus predicts that the nuclear warfare will commence in the year 2022 with some pretty harsh implications. He said that this type of warfare will not only change the climate with its destruction, it will also change Earth's position altogether. Moving the Earth's position is not good by any means. Does this mean that we'll be closer to our neighbor planets? If so, we are all doomed. Right in the hub of our list, we have World War III. With all the increased tensions in Europe, World War III seems very possible. All it could take is one country to attack a country with many allies, such as NATO, and there we go, World War III. And well, Nostradamus predicted this as well. In his quatrain, he said, quote, A horrible war which is being prepared in the West. The following year, a pestilence will come so very horrible that young nor old nor animal may survive. In view of the current situation between Russia and Ukraine, many experts are saying that World War III has already begun. And it's no surprise, all the world wars have started in a specific area and brought every nation for its help. In another one of his passages, he said, quote, the enemies will take a maritime city, hunger, fire, blood, plague, and a double dose of all disasters. This maritime city could be Ukraine, which was invaded by Russia. At our number four spot, we have the golden period. This is a very huge prediction because this could mean peace and love for a very long time. So let me elaborate. Nostradamus is not the only person who predicted the golden age, so this makes it a little bit more believable. He claims that we are currently in the midst of a period of change, destruction, and evil. This period started from 2019 and it will come to an end in 2025. After that year, he says humanity will experience a golden age where humanity is thriving with little to no issues or even conflicts with one another. It's said that after 2025, a new world order will be issued which will help humanity find peace amongst one another. Don't know about you, but I have mixed feelings about this one. On one end, like, yay, peace, love, prosperity, yeah. But what will this new world order be? And what will happen between 2022 and 2025, since we have three years more of pain and destruction? All the way at our number three spot, we have the rise of artificial intelligence. Technology has evolved so much over the last few decades that it's hard to predict what developments will be made one year to the next. This makes it even more impressive that Nostradamus appeared to hypothesize about artificial intelligence about five decades ago. In his book of predictions, he said, quote, the moon in the full of night over the high mountain, the new sage with a lone brain sees it, by his disciples invited to be immortal, eyes to the south, hands in blossoms, bodies in the fire. According to Sky History, the passage references an immortal sage. This sage, dear friends, could mean artificial intelligence, which is something that has evolved over the last decade. There appear to be many forms of AI produced nowadays, ranging from self-driving cars to self-talking robots but who knows if any of these will backfire on humanity. I've seen iRobot, so I'm a firm believer of this. At our number two spot, we have a year of inflation. According to Nostradamus, he claimed that 2022 will be the year of inflation. He says, quote, the copies of gold and silver inflated 
which after the theft were thrown into the lake at the discovery that all is exhausted and dissipated by the debt. All the scripts and bonds will be wiped out. In this prediction, he claimed that the inflation will spiral out of control and the US dollar will collapse causing things like gold, silver, and even cryptocurrency to become assets for the future. All the way at our number one spot, we have worldwide hunger. Another scary prediction made by Nostradamus claims that the increase in prices for food will cause worldwide hunger. The prediction said, quote, no abbots, monks, no novices to learn, honey shall cost far more than candle wax, so high the price of wheat. That man has stirred his fellow men to eat in his despair. Basically, he claims that global famine will be caused by inflation. Mass starvation will cause panic all over the globe. People left and right will be fighting over natural resources. It's the type of thing that would cause all of us to go back to our natural instincts of survival of the fittest. So it doesn't sound too appealing for many of us. 